Hey folks, welcome back to Premiere Basics. And you know, last week I was a speaker at Adobe Max. I gave about a 20 minute session there about transitions. I leave a link to it in the description down below because you can rewatch that. But I thought to take some of the essentials from that session and bring it here to YouTube. So transitions, basically when you have two clips that follow up on each other, you have a transition in its most simple form. Yes, a cut is a transition, but that's not really exciting, is it? Well, actually, we can make a simple cut more exciting. And I'll show you that a simple cut is 9 out of 10 a better transition than something fancy like this. So these are the four secrets to creating amazing transitions in Premiere Pro. And we're gonna start off with movement. When you have two shots where the cut matches in movement, we actually get a nice transition. They flow together. But this means that we're going to have to pay attention to it while filming, which isn't always so convenient. So what I have right here is a more static shot followed by one moving shot. So my idea now is to bring movement into the first shot, linking the two clips together. To do that, select a clip, head over to the effects controls and pull the position up a little bit and hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Go till the end of the clip and move its position down. And this creates an automatic new keyframe and we have the clip tilting upwards. Now to remove the black borders, just increase the scale a little bit and there you go. Now the animation looks fake. It's it's not a realistic camera tilt, so expand the position property, revealing its curve. The lower the curve, the slower the speed of the animation. So I'm going to pull it down in the beginning to make it accelerate slowly, going faster till the end. And now let's have a look at the transition. They flow beautiful together, creating a transition with matching movements. The next technique is called expectation. I have a bunch of clips here of these waves. Now at the moment, they just cut from one wave to another. But now let's build upon the expectation of the viewer and you'll see that they transition much better. So in the first clip, we see the wave going to the right. In the second clip, it goes to the left. The viewer expects this wave to continue to go in the same direction, so let's do that. In the effects library, search for the flip effect and we're going to use the horizontal flip. I'm gonna drag this over to the first clip. Now both of the clips go to the left, which already connects the movement, but also fills in the expectation of the viewer. Now it goes much further than that, guys. In the first clip, the wave is losing its momentum. So I wanna trim this clip to keep the strong movement in the wave. There. And this way the expectation is that the strong movement continues in the second clip. That second clip starts a little slow, so I'm going to trim that as well so that the cut into the next one has a more heavy movement of that wave too. And playing this back now, you can see how these two clips transition greatly. Now in a clip that follows, we can see the wave crashing onto a rock and it continues in the last clip. However, here we are losing momentum again as we start with an empty shot. So I want to trim this until we also see the wave in there. And we now have a nice sequence of waves that follow direction, keep momentum, and thus fill in the expectation of the viewer. Now this technique is always used in those fast action movies, such as a car chase scene. Moving on to transition secret number three, and this is my favorite. We have a shot of Kim just walking in the distance, and then we cut to these birds. Now at the moment, they don't transition very good but we can change that with the point of interest technique. The audience is looking at Kim in this shot. This is their point of interest. And I'd like to mark that for a moment. We can enable the guides and the rulers from the program monitor. If you can't see these buttons, just simply drag them from the button editor to the layouts. Now what this allows me to do is to drag out guidelines from the rulers. And I'm going to make a cross to where the audience is looking at. In the follow-up shot, the bird, which is going to be the new point of interest, it lays somewhere else. This is why it's a heavy cut. Now we can make this a more smoother cut by scaling up this clip and repositioning it, repositioning, repositioning it. Damn, that's a hard word. You get what I mean? Moving it to the cross. Now playing this back now, the two clips transition beautifully because they share the point of interest. And this is what allows those fast paced edits to happen. The audience sees and understands each shot, even though it cuts so fast. And this is because of the shaded point of interest. And I can actually make an entire video about this as the point of interest is something that we can do so much more with. It's an extremely powerful editing technique. And if you would like to learn more about this, then definitely check out my class on cinematic 
compositions. A lot of these editing techniques rely on good camera work, and in this class I teach you everything about it. You're going to learn about framing and how to guide the audience around the picture using techniques such as leading lines, perspectives, motion, and so much more. It's a short, curated class that you can learn fast and practice these professional techniques yourself. Now we've been getting tremendously positive reviews on it from more than three and a half thousand students who already joined. Now you can choose to stream the class from Skillshare. This works just like Netflix, giving you access to all the classes on their platform, including ours. And the first month is for free because we are among the top teachers and are able to give you that. Or you can also purchase it as an offline download, giving you lifetime access. There is a free preview lesson on our website, which goes more in depth about the point of interest. So definitely click the first link in the description down below, guys, for all the information. And I really hope to see you in my class. All right, moving on to the last transition secret, which is subject movement. We've seen matching camera cuts before, but we can also do something similar with matching subject movement. We've got a horse right here, which is turning its head and then Kim in the water turning her head. Now for the first clip, we're going to trim the horse clip so that we cut into the movement. For the clip that follows, we're also going to cut into the movement. And now these two clips transition because of subject movements. The turning head continues from the first clip over to the second clip. They connect together in harmony. Now we could take this even a step further by also making them match on the point of interest. Just look how great this transitions now. A simple cut done the right way. I hope you learned something new today, guys. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe to see us every single week. And also, I hope you see you in my class. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay creative.